Hello, I'm Andrew Wilson and I'm the Technical Manager for ITL Professional Horticulture. I'm here today on a working UK nursery and I'm going to talk to you about water quality for healthy plant growth. So water quality, you know, water is one of the most important and underappreciated inputs in plant production. Quality water is becoming an increasingly scarce and expensive resort. Growers are looking at rainwater capture and recycling and the water qualities can vary. So regular monitoring of this water will minimise nutritional issues and maximise quality. Now when we think about water quality, there are several factors to consider. Physical, biological and chemical inputs. So thinking of the physical properties of water, some of the issues we might come across are suspended solids and temperature. Now suspended solids depends on the water source really. So if you're using borehole water, there can be fine sands within this water. There can also be iron deposit, which can then precipitate out of solution. If you're looking at extracting from rivers or you're recycling water from a reservoir, there could be soil particles, organic matter and weed seeds. And in these situations, the best solution is probably filtration. It could be a simple screen filter to take out larger particles, or it could be a fully blown sand filter. There's appropriate advice for, the, for these situations, but it'll make a big difference to the water. And if you're then planning to treat the water and sterilize it, having already screened out the organic matter will make these processes more efficient. I also mentioned temperature. Temperature can be an issue if you're growing pot plants in heated glasshouses, um, things like poinsettias, and you're extracting water from a borehole where the water may be very cold, and you can give the plant a shock. So in these situations, you want to ensure that you're putting into a break tank so that the water can warm up slightly, um, else you cause issues. Looking at the biological factors involved with water, generally microbes such as bacteria and fungi, and algae and, and most of these can be solved by keeping your water clean so if you're using mains water and pumping into a tank you know you really want to ensure that the, the tank is covered and obviously it's clean before you start or may need to be cleaning and putting a cover over it will stop a lot of leaf litter going in there and then algae and pathogenic fungi building up more of an issue is with recycled water um, you know, as it leaves the nursery and the drains and goes into your tank or reservoir, that's a good time to pass through a reed bed or a slow sand filter. And this will really clean the water up and make it more appropriate to be able to reuse. There are specific water treatments available to kill pathogenic fungi, such as UV and chlorine addition, um, and they're quite effective. Another issue you might come across a lot of people are using drippers now, particularly with larger pots and trees. Um, drippers are a very efficient way of putting water on, but the nozzles can easily get blocked up. And you can come across iron bacteria and grow within these systems and block the drippers. So excess iron in the water is quite easy to remove. You can remove it by oxidation and basically um, within the tank, you can spray over the surface of the water um, to oxidise it and then it'll settle out in the bottom of the tank and this can make, make the water much better and you'll get rid of the brown deposits that you often see around um, nursery beds and on glasshouse walls. But the main thing we're really interested in in terms of growing once we've solved all these other problems is the chemical properties of water and this can have a real effect on plant growth. So when we look at water we look at several issues, we look at the soluble salts and the conductivity gives us a measure of the overall picture but then we also take an analysis to look at the individual elements. Another key factor is pH and this affects the availability of nutrients that the plant can take up but also the hardness of the water and this is even more important than the pH and telling us whether the water is hard or soft can, can really give us a clue to the potential problems with nutrition. So how do you determine your water properties? Obviously, take a regular sample. We'd recommend you take a sample of each water source at least once a year. And if you start to see variation in a, in a water source, I would take it more often. But once the analysis comes back, you can see the report there. Our technical team are happy to help with water samples and 
looking at the results. Basically they give you the EC value, as I say, the measure of salts in solution. But then they also give a breakdown of the MPK and other elements. Now we tend to call the other elements that aren't used by the plant ballast elements um, and they can be things like sodium, chloride and sulphates. And they add to the conductivity of the water but they don't necessarily add useful elements to the plant and they can cause harm if they're in high levels. And the key factor we see on the, on the water sample is the alkalinity and it'll say HCO3 which is bicarbonate and once we know that number it gives us a real measure of how hard the water is. So looking at conductivity I've done a little table here for you just to give you a guide to conductivity. You can measure it with a, a meter and there tend to be two lots of units that, that the meters use. It'll either be microsiemens or millisiemens and there's a factor of a thousand between the two. So you'll either get numbers like a thousand or numbers like one. So here I'm measuring in microsiemens and generally water that's usable for plants will be between 70 and 700. Once we start to get above 700, we can start to get issues, particularly with young plants. Um, but if, if you're growing in propagation, very critical that the water has a low EC, else you're going to affect the rooting and the health of the plants. Um, but the conductivity is bestly made up of the essential elements, like your nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, magnesium and calcium and also the trace elements. And then the ballast substances which can significantly add to the EC, such as sodium, chloride and sulphates. And high levels of sodium and chloride can be harmful to plants. And hard water from boreholes contains significant amounts of calcium and magnesium locked up as carbonates and bicarbonates. And, and just, just as a tip, you know, the lower the EC you have, the more space there is in the water to add nutrients such as water soluble feed. So coming on to pH, you know, what is pH? We sort of take it for granted. The important thing to know is that it's a measure of the hydrogen ions in, in solution. It's a measure of the acidity. A scale from 0 to 14, we normally think of 7 as neutral. We need to understand that it's a logarithmic scale. So the difference between pH 7 and 6 may not seem very much, but there's a factor of 10 times the hydrogen ions in six than there is in seven. And if we move from seven to five, there's a hundred times the amount of hydrogen ions. And again, seven to five, there's a thousand times. So the difference between seven and five is a huge amount. So plants don't like big, big changes in pH. It really affects their growth. But when we talk about pH, it's not just, you know, which pH is it? Is it the pH of the growing media or the pH of the water? If we look at the pH of the growing media, this, this is critical. And, the, and the, the pH influences the uptake of nutrients by plants. When it's not correct, you're going to face growing problems. The pH of water may not be as significant. It really affects the availability of nutrients within the solution around the roots. But the harder the water, the more the effect of the pH of the water. But I'll explain that in more detail. Now, thinking more about the pH of water, more important than the pH is the amount of bicarbonate, or what we call the alkalinity. So the pH of water should always be judged on the amount of bicarbonate present in the water. And high alkalinity water, which is hard water, can have a significant effect on raising growing media pH. And if we look at the pH of growing media and the availability of nutrients in the table, you'll see that variations in pH will really affect the quality of the plants due to the unavailability of nutrients at certain pHs. And low pH levels you know, will disturb the uptake of things like calcium, potassium, magnesium and molybdenum. And toxicities can also occur in some of the trace elements. And high pH is, is particularly common with hard water and it can really affect the uptake of trace elements such as iron. Now when we look at the alkalinity, it gives us different water types. We have hard water, with an alkalinity of greater than 150 milligrams and soft water with an alkalinity of less than 80 milligrams. And these have different properties. And hard water is going to have a higher EC. That means there's less room in the water for other elements. Soft water has a very low EC, 
means it's very soft and there's lots of space in the water to add nutrients. So looking at hard water in more detail, I've already said that the alkalinity is over 150 milligrams of bicarbonate and it's characterised by high conductivity, high levels of salts, for example calcium, high pH but also high alkalinity. And if we look at the water analysis here, we can see that the pH is 7.4, which is high. The conductivity is nearly 700, which is at the top end of the acceptable scale. And the alkalinity is 216. So this is pretty hard water. And if we look at the amount of calcium, it's 110 milligrams, which is more than the crop needs. It's a high amount of calcium. So what are the limitations of hard water? Well, it's really to do with your irrigation system and you can get blockages with hard water and you basically get precipitation of things like calcium carbonate on nozzles and drippers. And if you look in the picture, you can see the white deposits that are common. And these will build up and eventually lead to blockages. And if you improve the water by diluting it with softer water or adding an acid or an acid feed, you'll get a sample like the picture on the right where the nozzles are nice and clean and the water is running perfectly. As well as affecting the irrigation system, hard water will give you staining on the leaves and you'll get the same white deposits on the leaves and this can look quite uns unsightly particularly if you're trying to sell the plants in a retail market and you might have to do some cleaning again look at the picture on the right you can see the staining on the leaves and on the left with a better water source or an acidified source you get a much more vibrant look to the plants more shiny and probably greener plants much more saleable but what can we do about hard water? What are the options to try and improve it? Well, you can blend with a softer water source. Um, so you could collect rainwater on a glass house roof or rainfall into a lagoon or something. Um, you can add acid to reduce the alkalinity. Things like nitric and phosphoric acid are commonly used. But bear in mind, these are hazardous substances, so you'll have to do a, a cost assessment to be sure that it's safe. Um, equally, you can also use a hard water, water soluble fertiliser to reduce the alkalinity and we can talk more about that later. At the other end of the scale from hard water is soft water and this is characterised by an alkalinity of less than 80 milligrams. The water will have a low conductivity, there'll be a low amount of dissolved salts such as calcium. Again it's got a high pH but it's got a low alkalinity and, and it's characterised by a low pH buffer. This means that the pH can easily change if you use acid feeds, so it's something to be aware of. So if we look at the water sample, you know, we can see that the pH is just as high as the hard water sample we looked at, 7.66, but the conductivity is only 142. The previous sample we looked at was nearly 700. So the conductivity is much lower, and if we look, look down at the calcium, it's only 23, whereas the previous sample was over 100. And looking at the alkalinity at the bottom, the HCO3 is only 55. So that's clearly soft water. But what are the implications for soft water? What are the limitations? You know, it's low in salts, as I've said. And clearly, some of the key elements that it's low in are calcium and magnesium. Soft water is very pure, and there's hardly any salts. So if you grow in soft water, you could come across problems with magnesium and calcium deficiency. And there's a couple of nice photos here showing you magnesium deficiency on the older leaves um, with an in intervenal chlorosis. And then on the right hand side, you can see calcium deficiency. Calcium is continually required by the plant and it's essential to be applied at all times. And you can see in cases of deficiency, you're getting a necrosis on the edge of the young leaves quite characteristic. What can we do about this? Now in terms of fertiliser choice, you know, which water soluble fertiliser should you use? Well once you know the type of water you have, whether you've got hard or soft water, the next decision to make is whether to use the ICL Universal products or the Peters products. So let's look at water soluble fertiliser choice. Peters fertilisers are generally used for specialist crops and propagation crops and it's the highest quality products with a very low conductivity in the water soluble feed, giving you plenty of room in the water without damaging young plants. If you're growing outside, sort of container nursery stock, 
you can probably use universal hard water in high, in high bicarbonate systems with hard water and that can work really well. If you have soft water, obviously the universal soft water works really well. And you can also use the universal soft water if you come across symptoms of calcium deficiency. So use peters you know, with high value problem waters and propagation and use universal the nursery stock and general crops in soft and hard water. But the important thing is to match the plant nutrient demand and this can be in terms of osmocote or water soluble fertilizers such as peters and universal or a combination of the two and we can advise on this. Tips and tricks for watering a cultivation. Number one, analyze your irrigation water on a regular basis at least once a year. Number two, review your analysis with an ICL technical advisor. Three, evaluate the most common parameters such as EC, pH, bicarbonate and other elements. Four, determine with your ICL advisor the steps to take to improve your water quality when needed. And finally, five, define the right fertilizer composition for your tank, looking at the needs of your crop, the water quality, the aims of your nutrition plan and your own preferences. Thank you for listening to the presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.